they want that dick, but then they don't want nobody knowing that they want that dick. Okay. When you cut that off and you become the full woman, they don't want that. Because they can get that. Right. That's the easiest thing in the world. It's running everywhere. They got, there's girls paying dudes for dick. Okay. So why in wow. the world are you going to change and become one of them? Ooh. They don't mind the moans. They don't mind the titties on their back. They all with it. Ooh. But they don't want that. Right, right. So you have to figure out what you want and how far you're willing to go. Wow. Very powerful. Very honest. That's all it is. Realness. I live. I live for Freddy Pendleton. Yes, darling. You're giving it to me. All right. Tell us about, you know, um, the club scene. You know, what were some of the clubs that you experienced, you know? After? Damn, the clubs that I went to. I mean, I went to the garage. Ooh, legendary. The garage, the Sound Factory. The Sound Factory bar. Um, Better Day. Nickel Bar, um, Midtown 43, um, just Visions. Uh, I mean, I could go on and on and on about clubs, but it was not just about the club because so many of us who are adults now were underage at that time. If you didn't know the bouncers to get in, your ass was still standing outside, even if it was cold. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you had to know the bouncers to be in the club, so that they, and they had to know that you were one cute, two quiet, and not gonna make too much noise right. about the fact that you were there. Right. And that was it. So if you was, you know, held your shit right, then yeah, it was all good. Work. Other than that, what you like? Oh no, get him out of here. <laughs> and that's what they would do. Get the, yeah, y'all can come in. He got to go. I know that's right. I've seen it a couple of times. Yes. All right. I should have seen it. I dated a couple of bouncers. Ooh, that's tea. <laughs> <laughs> How exactly did you come out, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, well, it was funny. I mean, I, I, I don't, I just. It's kind of funny. I never really thought about it until you just asked it. Wow. But my, God bless the dead, my cousin, Kim, he was out before me, and he came out before me. And when I kind of, like, decided, oh, I'm going to tell my mother, <laughs> and I did, and I got out of the house that self-same week, um, I went to his house, and he was like, Okay, I'm waiting to take you at your ass out to party, and that's it. And I was already out at that moment. Yeah. And that was at 16. Yes. That was wow. at 16. Wow. And from there, that was it. No turning back. Oh, my, my. Amazing. You know, there's a room out there, and I, I want to clear it up right now, you know, because we done mentioned Kim Pentarvis' name two times already. There's a rumor out there, because I came across some some articles on uh, Google, and one of the articles I came across said that she was secretly a woman that turned into a man, a trans man, and they didn't find this out until uh, the autopsy when she had passed. It really, that's kind of crazy because that's a bullshit rumor because I know um, Kim Pendarvis was originally born a man from his mother and, you know, his sisters and everything else. So I'm not going to say his name, his actual real name on the air. Right, right. Because I'm going to respect his family's yes. privacy. But he was actually a man who, when he died, okay, his funeral, the funeral parlor, still to this day and that happened over 21 years ago still talks about his funeral because it was that large wow because he changed in his coffin not once not twice but three times oh okay my god what so, he was a legend he was a fashion god i will call him that and he is still reverberating in some way to this day. Kim Pendarvis. 
Yes. Wow. So, anybody who says they're a legend, cool. You, you're a legend, but you know what? Are you talked about after you're dead? Right. Are you a living legend? Are you? A, no, no, no. Living legends are those who talk about themselves. When you're alive. When you're alive. Right. When you're dead and gone and 10, 20 years has passed and people are still saying, you know, they see somebody and they say, I remember you because you had one of the largest, fun like, I'm using this as an example, um, you had one of the largest funerals we've ever hosted in the history of this place ever since this place was built. And that was 20 wow. years ago. Wow. Amazing. So that was it. It was so big. I mean, it's like this. Um, John F. Kennedy's funeral was his as big as Kim. Okay? It was so big that when we were at the grave site, we saw this wave, this whole, like, the whole ground looked like it came up. And this was everybody from the village, from Connecticut, from Philadelphia, from Washington, from Delaware, all these states, all these people who just knew of Kim, had respect for Kim and everything else, came out to support him in his last, last time being fashionable. That's the legend. Wow. Amazing. All right. Yeah, because I, I, I on Google, you know, it says uh, getyourlifegirl.com. If you guys uh, want to Google that, go to www.getyourlifegirl.com and check out this article on uh, Kim Pendavis. Uh, it clearly states, you know, that she was really secretly a woman that turned into a man, trans man, and no one knew about it. So just to clear up the rumor over the air, you know. That's what I really, I really, that's, you know, that's something that I, I kind of, feel funny about so many times certain things are real and certain people feel oh they want to make a name for themselves so they'll just put something out there right right you know unless somebody else took the name Kim Pendarvis after he died or they could have hey. been another Kim in the scene and must have got confused yeah there was another Kim there was a girl Kim and there was a boy Kim and we that's how we used to, we used to say that oh it's boy Kim or oh it's girl Kim right Right, because because that's what I, I kind of figure that you know because I did I did notice there were two Kim Pendarvises and one was a girl and one was a man. But though, no no no, there were two Kim. Oh. One was a Pendarvis, one was an Ebony. Oh, Ebony. See, wow. There's a difference. Because they yeah so so yeah someone's out there putting this, you know. Mhm. Mm uh huh. Wrong info. As always. Yes. Oops. How are you? you? Know, we, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. No, I was saying when you're, uh, when you have some type of fame or celebrity about your name, there's always others who try to take you down. I mean, look at Wendy Williams and Whitney Houston. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Wow. Let me ask you a question. Um, how were you introduced into ballroom? Oh God. Um. Okay. One day, Kim had um. He'd made his outfit. It was a green and black, a lime green and black tuxedo. And I remember everything about the tuxedo because we spent hours working on it, uh, actually days. But he went to the ball. He said, I want you to come uptown. This was when the ballroom's on 128th Street, Elks Lodge. Um, come uptown, bring my, bring my effects and everything else. And, you know, that's it. And it was summer came up by the time he called me said okay it's an hour to the category come on now i came up town and everybody already knew me the people who he ran with who came to the house right they knew me because i always had a job i was always working so that was that but then coming to the ball they didn't know me yet so when i went to ball first thing i did was Hey, Kim, how you doing? Here's your clothes. And everybody looked at me like, who in the hell are you? And he said at that moment, and it's funny because Avis came out because that was her time, her first time really seeing me face to face, but talking to me so many times over the phone. Yeah. She said, oh, hi, Freddie. How you doing? I said, I'm fine. 
you, who are you? And she said, I'm Avis. I said, oh, oh, oh. So we hugged, kissed, talked for a few minutes. And then everybody looked like, who in the hell are you again? <laughs> and she said, that's Freddie Pendarvis. He's in the house, been in the house. And she walked in the, she walked in the thing. Kim was getting changed. And he left. And, you know, that was it. I was in. So I was in the house already. As far as goes coming to the balls, that was the thing that I had not really made my <laughs> debut until that time. Wow, amazing. What was your category? My category? Yes. Oh, I, I no, 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 no. Uh, I didn't walk. I would have walked, but I never did because my thing was helping Kim. My thing was, you know, like if he decided he wanted to get people up there and, you know, uh, make an outfit for this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I'll be the one to do so much of the running around for it. Um, measurements, material, you know, and that type thing as he did the sewing and everything else. Okay, all right. Um, I, want, I was going to walk, what is it, um, high fashion summer sportswear for him at one time. But he got sick, and then he passed away. Oh, sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. And me, I, I wasn't, a, I, I mean, I could have been a stylist type person to buy this, that, and the other, and everything else. But it wouldn't have had the effect that Kim had, that Avis had. Right. You know, because they made clothing, you know, from scratch, from ideas out of their head, and concepts that they would come up with. They would have, um, like, a, a coat that would break off into a jacket, and then it'd have a bag. The, the jacket that broke off, the part that broke off would become a bag, and this, that, and the other. And it was different effects and tricks and, and, and things that would be imaginative and surprising. So if I can't work with what I know, I'm not going to work with it at all. Right, right. Yes. See. <laughs> Did you participate in any other uh, categories with, Ooh, with Kim? Oh, um, we did one costume one, but it was like I'm saying, most of the time it was ready to wear high fashion summer sportswear, high fashion winter wear, um, spring and fall, those things. And like I say, high fashion, that was it, the most of the stuff. Like I'm saying, he did a costume here and there, but not really too much. Um, right. That was left to other people because it was just not his thing. Because we had the vision and the ideal, the goal of, you know, doing fashion. It was going to be our, our moneymaker, our company. We had it. That was the plan, you know. Right, right. Wow. I know that's right. Mhm. Mm wow. Now, let's let's go into uh Paris is burning a little bit. Um give me a second. Now, in Paris is burning, right? You come you come out in in an episode. How how did you come about in Paris is burning, by the way? It was funny. Um they were filming Kim and they wanted to get me because I did I did the background stuff and I did the behind the scenes stuff. And um, Jennings asked if I was doing anything this one day. So I said, No, I'm I'm actually free. I you know, I'm just gonna walk through the city. She said, Oh well let's meet at the pier. I said, Okay, great, cool. We met at the pier, and she started talking to me. She started asking questions, just like you are, and I started answering, and that's how it developed. That's how it grew. And um, it was funny because sometimes um, you you may not even know, but it, though it's probably uh, among some, some of that footage that's on the floor, I was working the camera at the time. In Paris is Burning, I was doing really? some of the camera work, yes. Wow. And it was just funny because um, 
I found it interesting to be behind the camera. I, I always find it interesting to be not 